These workers are shoveling seeds and cotton buds, the first phase in the making of animal feed at this factory not far from Bamako. It's a far cry from the afternoon of 21 March, when Malian army mutineers stormed the office of Mali's National Cotton Company, firing AK-47 assault rifles. When the dust cleared, the soldiers realized their error. They had meant to take over the state television headquarters next door. This was the turning point in Mali's history, giving way to a crisis that toppled an elected president and paved the way for Islamists to wrest control of the north. But the chaos that has swept through Mali in the weeks and months since that day has left the country's twin economic engines essentially untouched. Mali is expected to produce more cotton and gold in 2012 than it did last year, triggering an acceleration in economic growth to around 6%. It also highlights the growing rift between Mali's still prosperous south, home to its gold mines and cotton fields, and its vast desert north. But the dispute is limited to politics, not economics, so the cotton sector, which directly employs around 4 million people, has weathered the political crisis fairly well. The cotton sector has not felt too many direct impact from these events. There's an important cotton production that was already there. We were in the process of finishing payments for the 2011-2012 campaign. Fortunately, we were able to mobilize 300 million US dollars of credit needed to pay the producers, and the operations were conducted at the desired time frame. Good seasonal rains have helped the rest of Mali's agricultural sector to recover from last year's drought. Together with the cotton farmers, the sector accounts for roughly 70% of the country's labor force. Gold production, which provides around 15% of Mali's GDP, has also stabilized. 2012 national gold production estimates stand at 50 tons versus 43 tons in 2011. Ultimately, the crisis was not as bad as people thought. For proof, here are examples that effectively wheat production goes on as normal. Three weeks ago, a new mine in Mali's northwest, Kaunkoto, went into production. Another mining company, Avion Gold Corporation, was bought by Endeavor. Gold mines already in production at the time of the coup are still going ahead, but publicly listed exploration companies have all but abandoned Mali because of the lack of foreign investment from Canada and the US due to security issues. We've seen the most problems with exploration companies because these companies need foreign investment. And when investors are cautious, naturally this will have an immediate impact on exploration. Investors who've explored the country say Mali is not credible as an investor destination anymore because half of the country is controlled by rebels. Mali's tourism industry, responsible for about 5% of GDP, has also completely collapsed. Timbuktu is in the hands of Al-Qaeda-linked Islamists and Jen, a UNESCO World Heritage Site that welcomed more than 30,000 tourists per year in 2005, has received less than 20 international visitors since February, according to statistics from the City Hall. Today in Jen, it's almost a dead city. When I say a dead city, it's because there's nothing left, because everything depends on tourism and artisanal crafts, and with this crisis, earnings have dropped by 65% at our mayor's office, and almost all restaurants and hotels are closed. This has had a lot of impact on our lives.